presidents and A-list celebrities showed out for President Joe Biden Thursday night for a swanky Democratic fundraiser at Radio City Music Hall in New York City. Hoping to inject energy into a seemingly lackluster campaign, the star-studded event resembled a concert at times with performances by pop star Lizzo and Queen Latifah to entertain the 5,000-person crowd. Amid all the glitz and glam, two former presidents, Barack Obama and Bill Clinton, joined Biden on stage, perhaps in an effort to boost his appeal. Biden's camp added a record-setting $26 million to his campaign's war chest, but protesters gathered outside of Radio City Music Hall to condemn Israel and its campaign in Gaza and echo calls for a ceasefire. According to reports, Biden addressed the protest, signaling support for a two-state solution. Now, of course, Donald Trump weighed in on the event as well, calling it uh, the event's guest list, a list of deranged Hollywood liberals, which <laughs> unfortunately is so funny and a little accurate, maybe a lot accurate. I hate these events. I think, you know, you know where I stand when I see a, a guest list like this. It just reeks of 1920s inequality, the elite getting together, having these swanky events while the rest of us are, are struggling to make ends meet. And I think most of that $26 million is coming from, you know, the, the classic liberal elite group of donors. And the last thing I want to say, and would love your thoughts on this, no one wears ties anymore. This drew a lot of attention on Twitter that they're not wearing ties. And, and many of the guests, you know, Barack Obama had a, a nicely tailored suit, so did Joe Biden, but not so much Bill Clinton. And the lack of tie and the lack of tailoring, I think, is a bad trend because women's fashion or men's fashion, rather, they have one option for formal events. You know, you wear a suit, you wear a tux. So don't like that look either. At least look good if you're going to be an elite, an elite event. I agree. I'm very pro dress code. I was very anti Fetterman hoodie. I'm anti mayor of Baltimore hoodies on TV. Now it's different, uh, you know, when he was first showing up to the collapse bridge. I'm not going to give him flack for what he was wearing, but I do think that people should show some respect for the office that they're in and, and try to dress up. And I think that this might be the first photograph in presidential history of three presidents together, all not wearing ties. But back to your point about this fundraiser, I agree. It seemed super out of touch. Apparently, Dua Lipa was there, and I think that she um, has expressed support for Palestine. So it's kind of interesting that she decided to go to this event um, and it, it reminds me that I read this article on The Hill yesterday about how a lot of celebrities are sort of biting their tongues or not sure what they want to do with the upcoming election because a lot of them either are pro-Palestinian themselves or have a very heavily pro-Palestinian fan base. And they feel like supporting Joe Biden would be a bad look for them, essentially, a, a silly PR move. Notably, Taylor Swift, who a lot of people have been speculating about how much she could have affect voter turnout. Um, in the recent primary elections, she tweeted out a reminder for people to register to vote and to vote, but did not outright endorse Joe Biden, which was kind of surprising to some people. And so I'm wondering, you know, as Joe Biden has said and his campaign has said that they're trying to court the celebrity vote and the celebrity endorsement, if this issue with the war in Gaza is going to complicate that, uh, that strategy. Tygate aside, I think, yes, when we look at who's at this event, Dua Lipa surprised me as well for the same reasons you said. She was our pro Palestine pop princess. People loved that she was using her platform to speak out about an issue that a lot of her base, which is Gen Z, cares a ton about. And to have her at this event, it's almost like you have a group of celebrities that disagrees with the president on something that's a matter of utmost importance. Uh, huge, grave matter, genocide in Gaza. And to get invited to an event by someone who has repeatedly said that they will not be holding Israel accountable, who has circumvented traditional authorization to give more weapons to Israel, those weapons are being used to, to kill and maim and starve the people of Gaza. To show up to this event anyway, it's almost like because they want proximity to power and that we really can't look to these people who are celebrities, who are entertainers, to be our heroes when it comes to political causes, when it comes 
to to grave matters of of humanity, quite frankly. It's not even politics. It kind of exceeds that when we think about the amount of people who are killed and the the children that are victims of the atrocities of this war. Uh, It's like, do they want proximity to power and they're willing to trade this? It just seems that these aren't the people we can look to for any kind of consistent moral compass as leaders in this matter. It's like the administration invites them because they want to say, hey, will they still support us even though they agree with you on this issue? So you should support us too. And yes, they're getting proximity to power, but what real power are they getting? Are they getting any? No, it seems that they're just pawns in this political campaign. Yeah, and in in 2016, this was something that backfired for the Clinton campaign, was her trotting out all of these celebrity endorsements as Trump was trying to run a campaign that was about speaking on behalf of the average American, the working man, and to see the juxtaposition of him not getting any support from Hollywood, quite the opposite, and then Hillary Clinton sort of openly parading around celebrities uh, was something that made her look quite out of touch. And I think that this Radio City Music Hall fundraiser has quite a similar tone to it. And it's it's definitely different, I think, when celebrities you know show up to perform at an inauguration, showing respect for the office, the institution, versus actually attending a fundraiser. That's obviously a much different thing. Um, one of the other issues with what Biden chose to do in New York is that he went up for this very swanky fundraiser And at the same time, there was a wake being held for a police officer named Officer Diller, who was killed during a routine traffic stop by a career criminal. He had 20 plus prior arrests and former President Donald Trump went to the wake and actually spoke at it and talked about rising crime, um, talked about the sort of random gang violence that's been happening in places like New York City and expressed his condolences to the officer's family as well as to the New York Police Union. And Joe Biden didn't really say anything about this. The uh, White House Press Secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, talked about it when asked about it by a reporter, but did not name the officer, didn't really seem to know the details of the incident, and actually blamed it on gun violence, which was quite silly because this perpetrator being someone who had been arrested 20 times prior um, shouldn't have had a gun in the first place, according to New York state law. So that didn't make any sense and just generally seemed quite uh, non uh, uncompassionate about the issue. Now, Joe Biden has said that he's pro-police, that he doesn't support defund the police calls from some members of the progressive left. He has held several events in the past couple of weeks trying to prove that his administration is going to crack down on crime. And this would have been an easy opportunity for him to go show that he cares about this issue, that he wants to support the police officers by going to this officer's wake. And instead, he skipped by it completely while being in the same city to go raise $25 million. It just seemed like such a uh, idiotic political move, particularly for someone who the media has repeatedly referred to as the quote unquote, consoler in chief. Yeah, Joe Biden could have saved a lot of time with this fundraiser by instead selling sneakers and posting commercials on social media and making videos. Then he wouldn't have to be there in person for all of these events. Like Donald Trump, he can be in person in these events because he's very smart, and instead he records video ads to sell Bibles for $59.99, gold sneakers, and now make social media apps and let them go public. Joe Biden should be more entrepreneurial instead of just begging for money by Hollywood's entertainers, or from Hollywood's entertainers, rather. I think it just it's all so out of touch when we have so many very real issues, whether it's someone who cares a lot about crime, someone who cares a lot about you know violence in New York City, or someone who cares about the, the people of Gaza dying at the the hand of Israel, which is financed by the United States. When Joe Biden was asked if it was, you know, Iran's fault that we had Yemeni rebels attacking American shipping, he said it's their fault and that they financed it. And so by that very definition, he he should be addressing the protesters uh, in this event as he did. But moreover, he should he should do something about it if he feels that the financier of war crimes is partially guilty of those war crimes, then guess what? We are guilty and we should be changing our course with Israel. And so it does feel out of touch when touch when very rich people get together to support a political candidate who simultaneously is ignoring a lot of issues that matter to the public that they're supposed to be serving. And so I think this kind of event provokes a lot of conspiracy, a lot of, oh my God, the Illuminati, they're all on the same team. 
Of course, they're all on the same team, but you don't have to Im imagine secret clubs. The club is very real. It's out in the open. We see, you know, that the the top uh, 1% or rather top 10% owns 90% of all stocks in the U.S. stock market. When we look at wealth disparity, you know, and the, the top 10% owning more wealth than the bottom 50%, and we look at how much wealth disparity has grown in recent years, it's obvious who's on the same team, the people that's using their money to make more money, giving each other money to stay in power. There's no conspiracy needed. It's just very obvious and it's getting more egregious by the day. It's very France before the revolution for a lot of people. We'll be back with more Rising after this.